listen, <laughs> Dinger, I pre- I appreciate you coming on the on the show. Um, first of all, is there anything, any news you want to announce? I saw you had a tweet that what you're officially retiring. Uh, any other news you want to break on the podcast before we go forward? Nope, just gotta sell gloves. No, I was kidding about retiring. I was joking. <laughs> did you? Did you? <laughs> you know, did you officially what? retire? Retire? Or were you just like I'm done playing? Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't officially retire. It was only certain people, like the celebrities. You know, the big name guys. They have the press conferences and they do that. Us uh, lower level guys, we just fade quietly into the night. <laughs> we just go away. Listen, I needed to do a wellness check on you because what did you po- you were posting Whitney Houston lyrics on your on Twitter and Facebook the other day? What's going on? Is everything okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? 100%. I like that song. Just of all the stuff going on in the world and uh, everything, there's, everyone's got an opinion and everything's negative and <clears throat> you shouldn't feel this way or that way. And I, I just remember that song and then I saw an article about uh, it was one of the kids that uh, had died or something. I just remember that lyric of the song, you know, I be, believe the children are our future. And I just like that song and go figure I, uh I have a, a pretty wide uh, musical background. Let's just say that. So there's a lot of music you don't think I would listen to, but uh, yeah, I just thought to put that up there. My wife even was like, "What are you doing? What's up with that?" And I said, "I don't know. Just I don't want to get too involved in the other stuff because you know I'm in Canada and there's you know so many different things going on in the world in the states and a lot of craziness. Uh, so I just wanted to post something positive. I just like that. I like Whitney. She's talented." Hey, no, nothing wrong with it. Just took me by surprise. I know that you're very taken by the lyrics, so I just wanted to. I wanted to make sure that everything was cool. You know, what if you tried? Oh to, yeah, yeah. What if you tried to blast Whitney Houston in the locker room back in the day? That wouldn't have gone over well. <laughs> um, it would have been okay. You know, it would have uh, probably would have gone better than Andre playing the Russian national anthem after we got smoked at home. So anything would have been better. Not. Wait. And some of the dance music. Well, if it, I don't know if you've had Vinny on, uh, but Vinny used to play Final Countdown like three times or two times. So <laughs> it was kind of like when you went to a Europe concert when they'd open the show of that song and they close the show of that song. Wait, that was like a big thing, you know. You know when you don't have that many songs when <laughs> you play the same song twice. Tell me, tell me Good what, tune. tell me what Andre Watt did with the Russian national anthem. I don't oh, know that story. Got, oh, so our old owner, Mr. Davidson, uh, God rest his soul, he was in town for a game and I don't think he'd really met the guys before. So, you know, you know, Bill Wicked and he's a good guy. And so he was taking him around the locker room, introducing him to all the players and like, Hey, Chris Tangman, he had no idea, whatever. And so uh, we played Ottawa, I think or something. We got smoked like five, one or five, two. And, uh, and the torts wasn't too happy. So I was like, we're never having their owner. I don't care who it is. They're never coming to the locker room for a game. Blah, blah, blah. So he was sour. A couple other words that uh, were four letters. Let's just say that. And then, uh, he was talking to uh, Svitov. He was a first-round pick. Uh, hey, Svitov, can you give me the Russian national anthem? Because he was doing his one years of all. So he's speaking, I don't know. But I guess Andre can speak a little Russian. So, um, yeah, so he's like, can you bring in the national anthem? So Svitov brought in the national anthem and uh, or the CD, and Andre put it on. And, um, yeah, full bore, and he was saluting and like, one years of all. And, uh, <laughs> George came in and, uh, you know, it was like, our, what's that song, uh, Leg and Slapshot, when, uh, God, what was it, the organist when he played Our Lady of Spade or something? Remember, uh, I don't know, he, Reg went up there and ripped it out of his, you know, ripped the music out off the things. Don't ever play that freaking song again. So it was kind of like that when George came in and pushed the eject button and grabbed the CD and snapped it in half. And, yeah. <laughs> Andre's like, what? What's the problem, man? And I'm like, buddy, can't do that after you get smoked at home. What, <laughs> Especially when the owner's in town. Was Andre Wa the biggest character that you ever played with? Uh, let me think. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <clears throat> There's a few guys, but I don't think anyone can touch Andre. He's uh, well, I watched your, I watched your, uh, <clears throat> I watched your uh, podcast with him. So, uh, yeah, you only got a taste. Uh, if you get him out for sponsored events or like when we used to do the, uh, we had the alumni camp, you know, or the the fantasy camp or whatever, and they get alumni guys come in and. Andre was a big draw, so because he could play guitar and sing a little bit, so uh, yeah, he uh, he could do it all. So you only got a little bit, you only got a little taste. He's got more to give. We well, all have I, more to give. I have more I, to give. I felt like a real loser because I had no idea that he didn't play Game Seven. So I asked, I, you know, I asked him what he did that day, and he said he started, you know, drinking. Did you did you feel badly for him at all that he didn't get the nod for Game Seven, or is it, you, you knew it was just part of the gig? Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, 
I knew he was upset and he wanted to play. And so him and Clymer and uh, Eric Perrin and Seaback, they kind of rotated in that lineup. And I was lucky enough and I played uh, every game. And, you know, I've been in a situation with Colorado where <clears throat> I didn't play the first round and I didn't play the first two games against LA. And then Dave Reed broke his jaw. And, you know, I got the call game three. And, um, you know, when you're not playing, everyone knows you're upset. And it's uh, it's difficult, but you you got to be a professional because you still want to win. And, you know, we everyone knew Andre was upset and he's an emotional guy, but he did a really good job of, <clears throat> I guess, hiding it. Uh, not, you know what I mean? I guess is the best way to put it or not being a distraction. So, uh, yeah, you know, you're aware of that. But, like, as a player, I have to uh, prepare to play. And same with the team. So, you know, we've all been in that situation at different times where you're not playing as much or not playing. And, it sucks. I mean, you know, let's be honest. Everyone wants to play, and he wanted to play. And but, uh, you know, on the flip side of it is that uh, <clears throat> you know the guys that are playing and myself. I wanted to win. I wanted to win for myself, and I wanted to win for him. So, and you need so many guys. Like you know, everyone played. You know, everyone was a part of it. Everyone stepped up at different times. So that's the biggest thing with winning. Is it? Uh, you say this, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I think we've seen this with the Lightning. Is it? You know, even with Steven Stamkos not playing, like, sometimes the team plays better because they rally around them. They step up for a guy. And, you know, it happened in Colorado where Peter Forsberg actually lost his spleen after game seven. We're out for dinner, and he wasn't feeling well, and he called the trainer, and the trainer showed up at the restaurant, and then all of a sudden uh, Pete's out, you know, Fopa's out, and then um, everyone's like, oh, we're done or whatever, and this and that. And then, you know, what it forced our coach Hartley to do was play everybody because before that he'd just, you know, play the crap out of those top guys. and not that they shouldn't do that. I mean, your top guy should play the top minutes, but he was almost playing them too much. And, you know, I think we talked about this last time where <clears throat> Ray Bork went in there and said, I can't play this much, man. I'm too, you know, I can't play 30 something minutes. I'm 41 years old. So, um, yeah. So they, when a guy, when a big name guy like that goes down, you know, you just, uh, we rallied around it because we wanted to win for him and Peter was on the ice same way. So, you know, it's all part of it. Uh, it's difficult, you know what I mean? It's like, maybe like you showing up to do uh, to do a radio show and then like, yeah, sorry, we don't need you, bud. Just, uh, <laughs> you're going to sit and watch. And if the guy does well, you're going to sit and watch to Tuesday too. And then Wednesday, maybe Thursday. So don't get hurt. Don't get hurt and play really well. So you got to bring it every time. That's why you're good at this, because you bring it every time. You wear a different hat, different shirt. <laughs> you're always in the same location. But you're always in the same location. So I wore a different shirt this time. I didn't wear my uh, stout shirt. I wore a different no i do i am trying to mix it <laughs> you know you, you got you got me down pat listen i need to figure out what's going on um are you were you complaining about edmonton were you trying to scam their 50 50 raffle i saw a lot of tweets when they were in the playoffs what's going on were, were you did you win anything what, what were they doing did they take your money i mean let's address it right here well yeah they took my money uh okay that i thought i was gonna win i had a real i had a premonition where <clears throat> I was going to win. It was actually fun. It was, uh, like, I wanted him to keep going. And everyone, like, I was on, I was tweeting with somebody or it was on Facebook or something. And someone's like, oh, yeah, you're an Oilers fan. You don't like the Flames. I'm like, buddy, I got drafted by the Flames. I played for the Flames. I never played for the Oilers. Like, I grew up in Edmonton, but, like, I'm not, like, an Oilers guy. I just like watching hockey. And I'm in Edmonton. So, but it was awesome because, like, all of a sudden the first 50 50 was like a million dollars. And it was like three and then seven. And it was oh. going up. And everyone's talking about, yeah. So, what? So what happened that one was that I was online all day and they changed their servers or something to accommodate more people as it was going up and up and up. And it was like the whole day. And like I was texting my buddy. Uh, I was like, Hey, but did you get in? He's like, no, I can't get in. So I was like, okay, if I buy tickets, you know, all year in, and if you buy tickets, whatever, we'll split it. And yada, yada, yada. And then everybody, a bunch of people are having the same issue. So um, I did tweet the number thinking that if I tweeted a number, they, they wouldn't uh, draw a number anywhere near that, but uh, they didn't really work. So, because they drew an A number, and my I had B and C numbers that started with B and C or whatever. But yeah, so it took like so I was watching the game, and you know when you're trying to watch a game and you have a baby and a family and stuff, and uh, the baby was cranky and uh, had to change a diaper and stuff. And I was like, I just wanted to sit to my wife. I just want to watch the game. I'm trying to get on 50-50, you know. It's like who cares? You're not gonna win. And I'm like, no, I think I'm gonna win. And then finally, like <laughs> right at the end of the game. Uh, I finally got through or something. I don't know. It processed. And then I got an email and I was like, okay, I'm winning for sure. Cause it was like, I think the game was over because I paused it a couple of times. So I thought for sure I was going to win, but uh, yeah. But then they keep delaying uh, when they were going to announce it. So it's like, okay, we're going to announce the winners at uh, 4 PM on Black Friday. And then it was like Wednesday and it was another week. And everyone's like, come on, man. Like, let's go. 
dragging it out. So yeah, that was it. I just wanted to win. I just okay. uh, wanted confirmation I was going to win, and I got a confirmation uh, I didn't win. So that's why I'm on the that's why I'm on the air with you. So I'm trying to promote <laughs> stuff and sell stout gloves and stout gloves and buy gloves and. <laughs> and, like stout gloves, and stout gloves and stout gloves and stout gloves right that was shameless huh that was a shameless promotion right there so yeah i was gonna announce my retirement so i couldn't announce my retirement uh, completely because i didn't win the 50 50 so i still have to work to pay for diapers and and youth hockey so uh i announced my retirement uh semi-formally as a hockey player so that's all i retired from playing professional hockey but i'm still gonna play amateur i'm gonna pay to play hockey a little bit but not hey, too much Listen, tell me, you had a good tweet about, uh, about Chara the other day. Uh, tell, me, tell me about him on the ice and tell me, I know he's very, very highly respected, you know. Did you, have you had any interaction with him off the ice? Because, you know, I know Doc Emmerich was saying that this is just, you know, one hell of a guy. And I think it's hard for Lightning fans to see that, especially when Kucherov gets, you know, hit in the face with a, yeah. with a, a stick and all that <laughs> stuff and all the other uh, things throughout the years. Yeah, I don't uh, – like, he was a guy that he came – like – kind of like myself, like a bigger guy, but I guess I was maybe more, not that I was ever polished, but uh, I guess I was more highly touted or scouted because I was projected to be a second round pick or something in the draft. But, you know, he's this huge guy that came over and played junior hockey and he was just like Bambi. Like he wasn't a great skater, but I think his dad was like Olympic wrestler, Greco-Roman wrestler or something. But the stories weren't talking to guys that played with him. Was it uh, like he said this video over and said, I'll do whatever. Like he showed a video of him wrestling and fighting and, so he would fight anybody. It was like much like guys, like he took his lumps early and then he just started pounding guys. Like, cause he was so big. And once he learned how to fight, and he was just a human machine. Like uh, he took his conditioning to a whole other level. So I was a guy that um, <clears throat> in order to be able to keep up with the better skaters and the more skilled players, I had to be in great shape and just to make up for my lack of agility and uh, skating ability. So, you know, I appreciate that. And the guys that put in the work in the off season, and, you know, I think you've seen that with guys on the team where, a guy comes back, you're like, holy crap, what happened to that guy? And he just trained all summer or whatever, just developed or something. So, you know, for him, um, like, if he wanted to kill guys every game, he could have killed guys. Like, he had Vinny – like, Vinny wanted to fight him one game, and we're like, oh, my God, Vinny, what are you doing? And Vinny did okay for a little bit, and they had him down. He could have hit him, and he didn't. So, all the respect in the world, and then, you know, I had to fight him the next game, or Andre or myself, I had to fight him, and then Andre wasn't playing. He was sick or something, so I fought him, but – you know, he was a guy that could really hurt people because he was so big and strong. And every year at training camp, I don't know if you ever there's a there's a YouTube video <clears throat> where you do the testing and stuff. And Dave Vanderchuk with Joe Ground, he's like, I can't even do a pull up, but he scored you know 700 something goals and he couldn't move in front of the net. But Chara would do like 32 wide grip pull ups. So you know what a wide grip pull up is? You know where your palms are facing out. So I have 37 and a half inch arms. He's probably got like 40 inch maybe. So for him to do 32, that's ridiculous. So. And then when he was playing in Europe, he had a custom-made road bike. He'd go for bike rides and stuff. So uh, he was just a guy that, um, you know, worked his ass off, basically, and uh, played hard. And, you know, he he really, like, again, like, you know, when he'd play against Marty, he'd play hard against, like, a Marty St. Louis. But if he wanted to, he could pick him up and slam him. Like, let's be honest. And there was that one time where Patch Reddy was chirping him or something when he was playing in uh, Montreal. And then Char gave it that kind of like, okay, that's fine. You can chirp me. And then. He was going wide, and then uh, Chara took him, and he, like, ran him off the turnbuckle, we call it. So, you know where the partitions are? Yeah, oh, yeah. And there's ones at the, yeah, there's the ones at the end of the bench. Now they're rounded where they used to be square. Well, he just took him and rolled him along and just went, you know, right, right off the turnbuckle, like hello Hulk Hogan or something. And everyone's like, oh, my God, what a dirty play. How you could do that? And I'm, you know, and then there's, there's the saying out of Bruins land or whatever. And I have the saying, too, like, don't poke the bear, man. Like. You know, leave the guy alone. Leave him. He's one of those guys. Don't make him mad because if you make him mad, you're not going to like what happened. So that was one time he got mad. And uh, Patch Reddy, I don't think, said a word to him since. So that's why I just, uh, you know, whether it's his last game or not, uh, you know, you'd love to have him on your team. Like, there's no way. He didn't, he couldn't even see Kucherov. So when he tried, he was just trying to lift a stick uh, in front of the net. It was just a play. Not a dirty guy, but uh, would do anything to win. And, you know, was a great leader and a great captain for many years. So, yeah, I think you have to appreciate that, a guy like that. You love to have him on your team. He wasn't on your team. <clears throat> but if that's the end for him or, you know, whatever it is, you know, you just got to appreciate what he's done. And the guy that, again, wasn't a great skater, wasn't very mobile and whatever, but just, you know, busted his, busted his hump to get in the league, stay in the league, and become an elite defenseman, let's be honest. Tell me – I know you're watching the playoffs. Tell me who's impressing you on the Lightning right now. And if you're not watching the Lightning and you're only watching the Avalanche, it's okay. You can be honest. <clears throat> no, no, no. I was, uh, I've was. i been trying to watch the games. I've watched pretty much not the entire games, but most of them. Uh, 
you know, I think Edmund obviously scoring that goal was huge. Um, you know, obviously, I think Point's been uh, pretty darn good. And Palat's – he's a guy that's perfectly suited uh, for playoff hockey. He's just a hard-nosed guy that plays a straight-ahead game. Corn's obviously been a good penalty killer. And, uh, you know, I think that checking line of Goodrow and them has been pretty good. And, uh, I mean, even just the fact of uh, you got, like, Shen stepping in and playing and you get those veteran guys. and Kobe. You know, they, yeah, Coburn, yeah. I'm still using a stick, so if you talk to him, man, if he's got some used ones, he doesn't like. That's, I'm pretty hot with that, man. I got a good sauce and could go pretty muffin top cheese. But uh, anyways, but you need that's, – that's the point is that, you know, like guys like that, those veteran guys, you bring in all those guys, you have nine defensemen for a reason because guys get hurt. And, uh, you know, those guys stepped in and played and they've done a good job. And you, you need that. You need those guys to eat up minutes so your top guys, um, you know, can get a break here and there. And you, you need them to kill penalty. So, you know, those guys, obviously your top guys have been good. And, uh, you know, vassy has been good. But, uh, you know, I think for them, like, if, you know, they obviously have a very good chance of winning. If they go on to win, you know, I think you look back at just getting through Columbus and uh, those hardships and, like, slaying the dragon, so to speak, uh, or, you know, getting exercising the demons they had before. So. You know, I think as a team, they've, they've played well. Just the grit and even, you know, Pat Maroon, too. There's a, he's a guy, like, it's not the most mobile guy, but, uh, you know, who's standing in front of the net when uh, Hedy scored? Him. Yep. You know, he's a hard guy to play against. Fuck, hey, you know, those guys, they, they got to play hard, and Maroon's won. So, those veteran guys impressed me. Like I said, the guys that have stepped in and, you know, a guy like Maroon, too, that, uh, you know, he stands in front of the net and just gets cross-checked. Basically, he's just there to – at least it's called, like, a duck. So, I played on a really good line in junior with uh, two guys that scored 55 and 63 goals, and I scored 40. But 40 is quite a bit, but not compared to 55 and 63. Jeez. But I was the guy that went in the corners and went to the net, and they used to joke around uh, that I was like the duck. I was a decoy. So I was like, wah, 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 and just go to the net and take one off the cap or something. So, you know, you got to go to the dirty area. They always say you got to go to the dirty areas to score. Well, you know, Kucherov does go to the dirty areas once in a while, but, uh, you know, he's more of the guy taking the shot wheeling around the slot. It's guys like Maroon that are standing in front getting – getting chopped and cross-checked. So I appreciate those guys that go to the, uh, the dirty area. So, yeah, just uh, so far the team's been good, man. It's great. They've uh, they found a way, and they're going to have to continue to find a way. And, you know, for Lightning fans, I think, uh, you know, it's a positive for them too in the fact that, uh, you know, they didn't get pushed around. They found a way to stand up. You know, Columbus is a, you know, is a gritty team, and they play hard. And then, you know, Boston too. And they found a way. And, it was like, you know, much like us, and I don't want to talk about the past and whatever, but it was like us in 04 where we didn't have the biggest, toughest team. And we were playing Calgary, and they were trying to run us out of the building. And all we had to do was just match it, just keep coming, just say, we're coming, we're not quitting. So, you know, I think that stuff too, I think, is a part of it, that uh, you're going to hit them back. And, uh, you know, there were some dirty hits and questionable hits maybe in the series, but that's part of hockey. But just getting up and continuing to go, fine, you're going to hit me. I'm, I'm, I'm still going. I'm coming. I'm going to keep coming. You can keep knocking me down, but I'm going to keep coming. So it's been uh, it's been pretty positive. So I think Lightning fans should be uh, pretty excited. You mentioned dirty hits, and I want to know, because the coach, the Bruins, had said that Yanni Gord, what I don't remember what he said, was a clever player. Are there any – did you ever see any theatrics when a guy was down on the ice? Would he ever play it up, you know, <laughs> to get a bigger penalty? Or was that – if a guy's down, he's hurt. Well, I can't speak for, for Yanni, but, um, yeah, some guys would. Obviously, the guys embellish, like the whole guys that throw their heads back and, oh, I got hit with a high stick. And, you know, that's the worst because when you just – you embarrass refs. You embarrass officials. And, you know, officials have a tough job. Like, nobody likes them. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's yeah. so mad at them. You can call it this way or that way and, you know, whatever. So, you know, we get all that. But uh, they're trying to do the best they can, and they don't really – you know, to be, like, to be honest, they don't want to be – noticed if you're if you're a good official you're not really noticed you just kind of you know the penalties are kind of even for the most part and you just try and call it and you don't really want to whatever but when you embarrass a guy like that makes those guys mad because they'll go back and say like listen like you made me look bad you know what I mean basically and then you're going to hurt your team in the long run because they're not going to call something maybe when someone's actually really hurt but you know sometimes a guy's hurt and he had a stinger or something and you know if it's a shoulder or a knee or a back or something or even maybe like you know, you just get uh, you get bumped in the head a little bit, and you're just kind of stunned for a second. It takes you a little bit to uh, to get rid of that burner or whatever it may be. So, yeah, I don't know the theatrics. Most of the time, like, when guys get hit, uh, like there was a hit on I think it was McAvoy in the corner from behind. That was, you know, he's hurt. Like that's a it's a tough hit, and even that one uh, that uh, Yanni took from the side, that's a hard hit. So whether he had the wind knocked out of him or not, you know, I don't think. 
you're going to get it verbally abused so bad. If you lay there and you embellish, like, you're going to hear about that for years. So I don't think, uh, I don't think there's too much embellishment, if, if any, but who knows. Hey, tell me, is anything ever said in the handshake line at the end, or it's just, you know, a team wins and a team loses and everybody accepts that? Or is, it, is there any ever chippiness that kind of carries over? <clears throat> no, I think for the most part, like, I've never had an issue with a guy. You know, usually you just congratulate guys, and uh, if you know them, you know, you just say, bud, sorry, man, or whatever. And, you know, whatever you may be, but uh, <clears throat> I do remember – like Avery, there he was pretty famous when he was going at it with the Berger, and I was like, "What are you doing, chirping Marty Berger, man? That guy's a Hall of Famer, like one of the top two goaltenders, Emmer Patrick Law, or you know, there's a few Glenn Hall like that are up there, the greatest of all time, and you're you're calling him a, like a fat pig and stuff. I'm like, have some respect or whatever. But that's just Avery, so whatever. But uh, uh, <laughs> he got a beating from uh, I think it was uh, who was it? Uh, Jansen, not Jansen. Um, Oh, he's got a podcast, Cam. Yeah, Cam Jansen. I think okay. he got him. He he laid a beating on him next year or the year after or whatever. But, uh, yeah, there's usually not too much said. But I do remember Lucic, um, yeah, he was playing uh, – when Boston was playing Montreal and Dale Weiss was running around or something, um, you know, trying to play, you know, play tough and whatever. And, and he said to him in the handshake line, he's like, you're going to get it next year or something. And it was like – everyone's like, what did, what did he say or whatever. And Weiss, I think, it came out and said what he said. And you don't, like – it's kind of an unread rule. Like you don't uh, say what was said. You know right. what I mean? Like what it's just on the ice and whatever, unless it's something, you know, really bad and, you know, racially charged or anything like that. But, you know, if a guy, if I say, listen, you're like, you're going to get it next time we play, you know, just be ready. So I know uh, there was that instance where Lucic said that. And I was like, Oh my God, that's great. So I wanted to watch the next game. I was like, okay, when do they play again? Cause I wanted to see if, you know, if he was going to get them or, if, you know, he'd make them fight or whatever. So yeah, usually there's not, it's the ultimate like for me it's the ultimate um sign or form of respect where you know it's done like you battled and one team won one team lost and you just say good job and you move on most guys know guys like it's the way the league is now and the international competition and training in the summer and you know toronto like stamp goes a bunch of those guys all train together and you know swedish guys you know when they're back and then sweden and their towns and cities like professional guys usually train together so a lot of guys know each other so there's usually not too much bad blood, but, uh, you know, there's a little bit. Tell me about, like, because right now, you know, this podcast comes out in a week, so the Lightning will already be playing, but right now they're resting, and that Flyers-Islanders series <laughs> is still going. Tell me about, you know, a rest day versus a momentum of a, a team still playing <laughs> and not having, you know, some downtime like the Lightning are going to have right now. Is there is there an advantage either way? Does the advantage clearly go to the team that's resting? Um. I think a little bit, but in this, in this year, and there's been so much rest because they were off for three and a half months or whatever it was. And, you know, guys were training and stuff, but you didn't have the, the wear and tear and the grind of hockey. So um, there was a lot of rest, but um, you know, there's probably guys that are hurt. So you want to get a little bit of that rest. And plus like, this is a totally different animal where you're in the bubble and now they got to go from Toronto to Edmonton and stuff. So I don't know exactly the inner workings of that. You know, they're going to obviously move at some point and, you got to move an entire team and all the equipment the training staff and support staff and all that. So there's probably quite a bit that goes into that. So I think you'd want to be, have a little bit of time to facilitate that move and get used to, you know, new restaurants uh, in Edmonton uh, compared to what they had in Toronto and then a new hotel and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, I think guys will be ready, but that's an old thing is rest versus rust. Is it better to be rested or are you going to have too much rust from being rested? But, you know, I think you have a veteran group where a lot of these guys have been to the finals before and they've had the disappointments, you know, your Hedmans and Kalorns and guys like that have been around for a while. So <clears throat> they know what's at stake. And those are your guys you rely on that, you know, hey, we're going to we're gonna practice, but our practice intensity has got to be game intensity. You can't be – you can't mimic the same – you know, it's obviously playing and practicing and playing are two different things. But, you know, those are the guys you lean on. And when Maroon, like guys that have been there before, we're like, listen, we're not, we're not messing around. Let's go. Stop screwing around or – not that guys would be anyways, but, you know, those are the guys, if someone wasn't bringing it to practice, they'd be like, listen, let's go, man. Like, come on. Like, we got to stay ready. Like, because if, you know, the first game you get down, then whatever, that's important. So I think, uh, I think a little bit of rest would be good just with the, as I said, changing hotels and venues and stuff like that. But other than that, um, I think they're professionals. They're ready to go. 
Listen, uh, last question. I appreciate you taking time out of your day, out of selling stout gloves, stout gloves, stout gloves. I know that your wife, <laughs> I know your wife's published and, and she's a poet. Uh, have you tried your hand at any poetry or any writing or anything like that? A limerick, a haiku, anything, a stanza? Have you done anything or did you just leave that to her? Oh, man. <clears throat> um, yeah, I've, wrote, I've written a couple poems and I showed them to her and uh let's just say the response was less than flattering so, really <laughs> <laughs> wow man i mean come on that'd be like me going to uh i don't know like a grammy nominated actor and saying uh you should have done this in that role or you should use this uh you should use a different voice or a different uh whatever accent so yeah i'd uh i've tried a little bit but i'm not very good at it. what i actually pretty i'm pretty good at is uh so my kids listen to rap music a fair amount and uh so I like to freestyle a little bit. So really? I just kind of throw in my own lyrics. Yeah. I'm nowhere near as good as anybody that's on the radio, but I'd say to my kid, like, okay, here, I could just do this. Hey, I'm Chris. I'm from Edmonton. Here, we're going to go. Whatever. I can't even do it right now. But yeah, I'm more of that, more of a freestyle, you know. It's like Paul Revere, man, like it's on. You know, I had a little horsey named Paul Revere. It's me and my horsey in a quart of beer, riding across the land, kicking up sand, you know. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but. No. Yeah. Are, are, are the kids impressed by your, by your freestyling abilities? Uh, let's say no. It's more like we're well, an idiot, Dad. What are you doing? My son, my older boy, Hunter, he kind of laughs because I'm like, listen, I can kind of do this. You know, you go, do 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 da, do do do. Hey, like so, like all those. God, what do you call it? It's like hype music or something. Yeah, they uh, yeah. They just make noise. Yeah, like at the end, like... it's like, oh yeah, at the end, oh, I'm like, I could be the hype guy, man. Bang, bang, hoy. Or whatever, you know. It's like so. your DMX or something like that. Oh my god, yeah, I must sound like a total idiot. When you play this, you guys are gonna be like, "Oh my god, this guy's a total moron." But no, yeah, I learned a little bit about music. I like the baby. I, I'm a I'm a fan of the baby. Okay. That. Oh, my younger boy's got a song. Uh, what's poppin'? Um, god, who sings it? Starts off with you know, what's poppin' or something. It's actually pretty catchy. So what it's, about it's, like it's you know, Cardi B or anything like that? Yeah, she's okay, but. Uh, you know, like listen to these lyrics and uh, they're they're raunchy. You know, it's yeah, not... I have kids and I have yeah, and I have a baby girl now, so I'm like, oh my god, like I don't really want to, I don't want to know what uh, the teenage years are going to be like. So yeah, yeah, right, I don't think, okay. yeah, I don't think they're all going to be like that. I th I don't think they're all going to be like Cardi B. I know that that they they're trying to say that movements about like female empowerment and that if if guys can talk about it, the women can too. But yes, I I don't necessarily know if I want my daughter to be a a rapper. But you know what? Who knows if she's making money and it's less that I have to do you know fewer interviews that i have to do like this then great i'm all for it you know yeah how about like a country singer she your daughter like maybe we could have like uh they used to have the dixie ch chicks and now they're the chicks you could have a duo we could have a country music duo and uh, i could play drums and you could produce or i don't know if you play guitar or anything else but maybe you play harmonica banjo i could play the Tambourine. triangle the triangle there you go yeah you just do ding 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 yeah or you get the bells going man you'd be one of those guys in the background that's that stuff's important. It's like a hockey team. You need everybody. You know, it's like, uh, who's the guy in Bon Jovi? You know the guy with the curly hair? Not Alex Von Such. What was his name? What? David Who? Bryan. David Bryan. Was his name David Bryan? Who, what did the he guy do? In bon, jo bon Jovi. He was the organist, man, or the keyboardist, oh, man. Oh. Do, do, do. Yeah, but some of the songs, it was like, do, do, do. You know, like, wasn't doing a lot, but it was important to the music, you know? Every, everybody he chips in. Yeah, you could be one of those guys. You could be a role player, man. I could be a role player. No one looks to the drummer anyways. You just got to keep beating. I'm, I've been a role player my whole life, so why would anything change, you know? Yeah, yeah. You got to dance with the girl you brought. That's that old saying. So we got to stick with what we know. Oh, man. We could be called the role players. I don't even know if anybody has that name. But then, then yeah, again. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't. Well, we don't have the bodies or the, uh, the looks to be a lead singer. So we got to kind of be, we'll you know, it's darker in the back. <laughs> we'll, find, we'll find somebody. Uh, Dinger, yeah, what do they call it? Backlighting? <laughs> yeah, where, where do people get the stout gloves stout gloves stout gloves is it just stoutgloves.com yeah just google it. yeah stoutgloves.com uh we have a uh, u.s site and a canadian site so just google stout gloves and i'll respond to you most likely because yeah. i gotta do that because i gotta sell gloves and make sure you follow dinger on twitter at ding dash listen dinger i appreciate it great job as always my second truck interview of the year uh you, you nailed it you killed it and hopefully uh, the Lightning go a little bit deeper into the playoffs so we can do this one more time this season. Thanks a lot, Oh, man. yeah. Let's get the hat trick going. Let's do it. Thanks, Dinger. You're welcome.